While most blockchains are designed as a platform for developers to build on top of, Cosmos instead aims to allow developers the opportunity to build their own blockchains and instead be a part of an internet of blockchains. So stick around and let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Sprague, and while most are panicking about the state of their portfolios currently, I'm using this opportunity to research and look into solid crypto picks that I can either ride into the next bull run or that I can accumulate over the next few years and wait out this bear market. And regardless of which of those two outcomes ends up happening in the next few months or so, one pick I firmly got my eye on is Cosmos and its Atom token. While most chains are moving to proof of stake, there's very little thought given to just how decentralization is actually achieved on a proof of stake network in its early years. For example, let's say the proof of stake chain I've been working on in my free time is now production ready and I'm ready to roll it out publicly. With proof of work, I would just distribute the miner and tell people to go nuts. Everyone that starts mining then becomes a node and aids in the decentralization of the network. One big problem with proof of stake, however, is that the coins aren't distributed in this way and therefore there is no incentive for someone to actually run a node in the early years of a chain. So instead, the chain needs to sell off some of its tokens on the contingency that the people it sells it to then run nodes to aid the network. Then slowly over time as tokens are sold and bought by the public and ultra start running nodes on the network and people start staking which aids in the decentralization process they will eventually transition into a fully decentralized blockchain and any systems that were helping prop the network up when it wasn't fully decentralized would be turned off. This actually happened fairly recently with Cardano where they produced their first ever fully decentralized block. So proof of stake requires a lot more work to actually build up the initial network than proof of work does. However, if we're all moving forwards towards proof of stake anyway, then what is the solution? Side note, if you'd like to see an in-depth comparison of proof of stake versus proof of work and the pros and cons of each, please leave me a comment down below and then consider hitting the subscribe button to be notified if I do end up making that video. So how do you create a tailored proof of stake chain without actually creating a proof of stake chain. Cosmos SDK. On the Cosmos network, anyone can create a blockchain and then use the Cosmos hub as a central source of truth and also as a way to communicate with other blockchains on the Cosmos network, or as they're known on the platform, zones. To figure out how Tendermint actually achieves this, we first need to break down a blockchain into its three most simple components, and they are as follows. First, we have an application layer, which is where the state machine lives. And see my video here if you don't understand what that is. This is where the current state of the machine, any smart contracts, or the balances and the state of the ledger happen. Secondly, there's a consensus layer, which is where an agreement is reached on the absolute state of the ledger, and a networking layer, which is how nodes on the network communicate with all other nodes on the network. So what if instead we abstracted the blockchain out, and instead of having all three of these figurative layers all in the same place, what if we instead split it out so the consensus and networking layer were provided by an SDK or a toolkit and then a developer could just create just the application layer. This is where the three core components of Cosmos come in. Starting from the top, we have the Cosmos SDK. And for any non-developers out there, SDK just stands for Software Development Kit and is a toolkit provided by the creators of a product to ease developers into developing on that platform. In the case of Cosmos, governance, tokens, and staking are all part of the pre-bundled code that comes in the SDK, allowing developers very easy access to start working on the Cosmos network. Secondly, we have the application blockchain interface. Now, because a developer can come along and create their application layer in pretty much any language, there needs to be a common bridge that goes between the application layer and Tendermint Core, which contains the consensus and the networking. This is where ABCI comes in. And lastly, we have the Tendermint Core, which, as I said, contains the consensus and the networking layers. The Tendermint Core allows communication between that zone and the Cosmos Hub, but also through the Cosmos Hub allows that core to interact with any other zone on the network meaning that you can have public and private chains communicating with each other through permissions. Now, the way that Cosmos actually achieves its consensus is kind of confusing in its topology, because while the Tendermint core does actually provide a consensus layer for that zone to use, they don't need to use it. 
In fact, any blockchain could in theory be ported to the Cosmos platform. However, the type of chain would affect how easy or difficult that is to do. For example, Bitcoin is actually quite a hard one to port to the Cosmos network because it's proof of work. And then again, when we move on to the topic of staking in regards to consensus, Cosmos again provides a large amount of flexibility. For example, in the Cosmos hub, the voting power is determined by the number of tokens bonded. However, in each chain, this doesn't technically need to be the way that voting power is determined. Tendermint's implementation of the BFT aims to be simple, fast, and fork tolerant. In the system, a group of validators will either vote on a block or try to pass to go to the next round, with the blocks being proposed by a block leader. In the system, a group of validators will vote on the validity of the next block, which is proposed by a block leader. Once a leader has been deterministically chosen, they will then build a block and submit it to the network, where the validators will then either choose to accept the new block or try to pass and move on to the next round of voting. This is a fairly standard mechanism of using a supermajority and block leaders to stop it from halting or forking. This also means that not only is the network safe if two thirds of the network are trustworthy, but also that if a validator is casting bad votes, it can be identified and they can be removed from the node pool. The fact that this consensus mechanism is bundled into the SDK for a developer to just come along and write the important part of their code is a major benefit for Cosmos. In fact, the Cosmos Cosmos SDK is so full featured, you could take the entire Ethereum virtual machine, again, see my video here if you don't know what that is, and port the entire thing onto the Cosmos network. This has actually been done and is called Ethermint. And for all intents and purposes, it is Ethereum running on proof of stake. In fact, it even works with MetaMask and all current Ethereum contracts could be ported over onto Ethermint one-to-one. -one. This should show you just how powerful this system is, where the developer can not only control the state of their application, but also define the core rules and system fundamentals that go along with it. This means that they can perfectly tailor a chain to their needs without having to deal with any of the problems that come when trying to build a decentralized network or reach distributed consensus. This brings us to the Atom. Cosmos's native token. Because the hub is required to keep consensus across all chains, the Atom is there to facilitate the transfer of information between zones to other zones or paying transaction fees that use the Cosmos hub. Similarly to Polkadot and its parachains, any fees within a zone can be paid in the native token of that zone and don't have to be paid in Atom. This might seem like the Atom token is maybe fairly useless in the grand scheme of things, but it's not really when you think about what Cosmos is trying to achieve. Cosmos is trying to achieve a platform where all blockchains are working within the same ecosystem, which means the end goal is to have intercommunication between every single one of the chains on its network. For example, having Ethereum be able to directly talk to Bitcoin without needing to manually build a bridge between the two. Due to the fact that in this scenario, the Atom token would be required to do that cross zone communication, which means the Atom token actually has a very large use case as the platform grows. To figure out the potential ups side of Cosmos, we need to try and identify a competitor. And there's only really one that I can think of in the form of Polkadot. And I know that that's not even really the case because they are kind of aiming to do two different things still. However, it's going to have to do and be good enough for a rough comparison. So if Cosmos had the market cap of Polkadot, each Atom token would be worth $64, which is a 624% upside. Or if we were to compare it to Ethereum, which really isn't that far-fetched when you consider that if Cosmos actually gained market dominance, there would be no need for something like Ethereum because it would just work on the Cosmos chain. If this actually was the case or ever did become a reality, which I'm not saying it ever would because I personally believe that Ethereum will always be the dominant smart contract chain, but hypothetically, if it did, the upside will be 109 times, bringing each Atom token to $966. But as with all things, I have some concerns. Firstly, Cosmos achieves its speed and stability by just having a limited number of validators. Now, while some of Cosmos's detractors might say that this is a cause to call it centralized, I actually don't agree with this point because a network of five nodes truly randomly spread around the globe is far more decentralized than a chain that has 100 nodes, but they're all controlled by two companies. So while I don't think that this is in any way a representation of it not being decentralized, I do, however, have a problem with the choice of using block leaders 
because if there was a coordinated and big enough attack against the network where they identified and were able to DDoS or corrupt individual block leaders, there is the possibility the network could be attacked in this manner. Secondly, and this is purely from a developer point of view, all of the documentation seems to claim that your application layer can be written in any language. And while this is technically true, because you can use any language to talk to the Tendermint core via ABCI, the problem is that all of the pre-bundled code and the SDK is built in Go, which means that if you don't want to have to build any of it yourself from scratch and you want to be able to use the developer SDK, you have to work in Go. For example, before I finalize any review of a smart contract chain, I like to see how easy it would be for me to actually get up and running on that platform. Now, due to the fact I'd read that they said you could use any language and I saw that they had something called the Starport CLI tool, which is just a command line tool that gets you up and running on the Cosmos SDK faster, I thought I'd have it up and running in no time and I'd be able to have a play about with the network. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case because I don't know Go. So while yes, I technically could have written it from scratch myself, I'd be missing out on all of the tools that they have provided in the SDK because they are only supporting Go at this current time. So while their claims of being able to build a blockchain in any language are technically true, and while the SDK is open source and therefore could be ported to any other language, at the current moment in time, it would be far harder to build a blockchain in anything other than Go. That said though, with time and as the platform grows and more developers come in, I know that the SDK will be ported into other languages because it happens with most open source projects that get into the mainstream. And in researching this video, this is actually a token that has made its way into my portfolio now because I genuinely do believe in what they are trying to accomplish and I think the foundations of it are very strong. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave me a like and a comment down below. And if you generally just enjoy my content, please do consider subscribing. Thanks, bye.